and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a question and answer uh, video. I'm going to be showing you how these uh, beautiful new pencils of mine perform in a coloring book. At the same time, you can see I've got my color swatch chart. I don't know how many of you saw my previous video where I put all of the 120 uh, Brute Fooner colored pencils, the square set, into perfect color family order. If you've not seen that video, I'll make sure that it is linked in the upper right hand corner. But I put all of those in order for you. I also did a review on these pencils. If you've not yet seen that, I'll make sure all of that is linked. But today I'm going to answer all of your questions that you asked me in this video while we color in Maria Troll's uh, Nightfall, which is one of my absolute favorite books. I love, love, love this book. And so I had asked in my Facebook group and also on my YouTube community tab for questions that you all wanted me to answer. Some of them were more tutorial type questions, which was wonderful because that also gave me some ideas for future tutorials. But there were also a lot of questions I could just answer, answer for you while I color. So we are going to color in this gorgeous coloring book. We are going to use the 120 set of the squared Brute Fooner uh, color pencils, which are fabulous, by the way. I wanted you guys to be able to see how they lay down on the paper and how they perform in this book. I am going to be testing these pencils on other books as well, and I will be updating you all as to which books these pencils perform the best in, and I may even bring you another video um, with that information because these videos have been so popular uh, with these Brute Fooner pencils. They are fabulous pencils and I know some of you are having a lot of trouble getting your hands on them. They seem to be going in and out of stock, in and out of stock on Amazon even within a 24 hour period. They will be there and then they'll be gone 30 minutes later with an extended date of purchase. Now know that if you do order them and you see the extended date of purchase, just because it says they're not due until uh, March 14th or they won't ship until March 14th, that does not mean that you will not get them until then. Every time I've ordered something and it has an extended shipping date, I usually get that product pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and get into answering some of your questions. If y'all enjoy videos like this, please do give it a thumbs up. And also please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I have a goal to hit 10,000 subscribers very, very soon. <laughs> um, most of you that follow me in my Facebook group, you know that I love to set goals. I always have a goal of how many subscribers I want to reach by a certain date. And I always put a ton of effort into my videos and plan all of my videos out before I bring them to y'all because I always have a goal of how many views I want that particular video to get. I'm constantly studying my analytics to see what you all want to see. And I continue to produce those videos to bring content to y'all that you are going to watch and that you want to see. And this way it just kind of keeps my channel growing. And that is actually what has happened. So <laughs> I have a goal now of reaching 10,000 subscribers. I was just very recently at 8,000. We did my 8,000 subscriber giveaway and I will definitely have another giveaway when I hit 10,000. So stick around for that. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel to help me hit this goal. If you've just been watching my videos every so often and you're trying to decide whether or not to subscribe, please do subscribe to my channel. I have lots of really great content coming. I've got lots of really great plans for this channel and I would love to have you as part of my community. If you check the description box below, you will also find a link to join my Facebook group. It is a wonderful supportive community of colorists and we even have card makers and other hobbyists that use colored pencils in many different ways and really just want to learn how to use colored pencils if they've used maybe another medium before. And so it's a really great community to be, to be a part of. I also have a email 
list if you would like to be a member of that. You will also find that link down in the description bar below. Let's go ahead and get into this video. I'm going to show you a page that I've already actually started coloring with the 120 set of squared root Booner pencils. And I am going to continue on that page and take you guys along with me while I answer your questions. This is the page that we are going to be coloring today. And as you can see, I've already started the shingled roof on this page. And I am going to continue with the roof to show you how I did this here while I answer your questions. And I'm doing it right next to my page that I love so much. There was a really great tutorial on this one that is also on my channel. I'll make sure that's linked in the upper right hand corner. This was actually one of my most popular videos on my channel. I think it probably has over 15,000 views now, but Google has actually picked this video up and it is sending it out in Google searches, which I am very proud of. It's in Google searches now and YouTube searches. And so I am very, very proud of that video. <laughs> I zoomed you in just a little bit so you could see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you first, for those of you that may have this Maria Troll book, I know that um, when I posted my questions, I had asked what book you want to see me color in. And her books were one of the most suggested along with World of Flowers and Kirby Rosane's, but I didn't want to really start something in the Kirby Rosane's book because those books, they have a whole lot of detail and I know a lot of beginners follow me. And so I kind of just wanted to go with these books and these pencils perform beautifully on this paper. So we are going to use this book and I'm gonna show you what colors I have here. So I've got my swatch list here and I have 053, 112. So let's look here. We've got 053, which is here. And then we have 112, which is here. And I have 104 which is, where is 104? You guys are probably looking at the camera. Oh, here it is. You guys are probably looking at the camera and saying, I see it, <laughs> it's right there. So here's 104. And then I have 109 or 089, 089. And 089, I think that was from the blues. Yeah, so that's right here. I have kind of a very different mixture of colors but when they all came together, they came together really beautifully. So I know a lot of you wanted to see a video of me using oil-based pencils, and these are oil-based pencils, so you're gonna get to see me use these today and show you how they kind of layer rather than blend together as I answer these questions. And I have all the questions up on my, um, computer screen, which is right in front of me. And I'm just going to kind of answer them as we go. And I'm going to kind of make this a little bit of a tutorial at the same time, because you guys know all my videos are tutorials of some kind. And I also, I want to show you the difference here in, um, when you're using oil-based pencils, the difference in when you lay the lighter color down first as opposed to the darker color down first because I did it both ways up here and I don't know if you can tell by looking at the camera, but these areas over here are where I laid the darker color down first and then up here I laid the lighter color down first and so they look quite different, but I kind of like that because I'm coloring a roof and it just kind of puts like I've got much more of the uh, reddish color all up in this area. And it looks really great because it just has kind of a different effect in every one of the shingles. So I'm kind of doing it both ways and I thought that was really cool because I've never really experimented with that in one any 
or any one given object on a coloring page. So let me go ahead and fill in the lightest color here on most of these. And as you can see, I'm not coming all the way down because I want to purposely leave the white here just to create some kind of separation. And this is always how I like to do my shingles on any rooftop for any house of any kind that I'm coloring because it just creates a little bit more dimension. So I've got the lightest color down for all those and I'm gonna to go to the first question. But my first question is from Tracy Lynn LaPointe. And she said, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Where did you learn art? What advice would you give to another person who is interested in making an adult coloring channel on YouTube? Okay, so she has quite a few questions. I'm coming in here with my second color and I'm just going to kind of lay this over the lightest color. But she has quite a few questions and I noticed that a lot of you that asked me questions also had quite a few questions in one and I'm going to try to answer all of your questions. So this video may take a little bit of time so I'm probably going to definitely divide it up in at least two videos and if you guys have any more questions leave those in the comments below because I will continue to do these videos as long as they are well received. So to answer her for, or the first part of a question, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Well, <laughs> I first created my Facebook group. And when I created my Facebook group, I had shared a, oh gosh, what was it I shared? I had shared a page, I think it was a Hannah Carlson page, and it was coloring bubbles. Like it was the page that had all the bubbles on it. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that but it was the page that had all the bubbles on it. There, It was from, I can't even remember which book, right now, Magical Dawn, I think, and it was one of the only pages in there that has bubbles on it. Okay, now I'm coming in with my third color and I'm gonna do that here at the very tip. When you guys do this, make sure that you've got a pretty sharp lead on your pencil and I'm using very light pressure and I'm just kind of blending this color over the others and I'm going to do it on every one of these shingles. So I had shared that page and so many people had asked me to do a video tutorial and show them how I did the bubbles. So after so many requests, I decided let me go ahead and just make a video. Now let me tell you, when I made that video, I was sitting here coloring. I didn't have any proper video equipment. <laughs> and so I was holding my phone up in the air over my coloring book. <laughs> And I was using one hand to color with to show the demonstration of how to color a bubble. <laughs> and everybody in my Facebook group really loved that video and so it got a ton of views just in my Facebook group. And I was always someone who said I will never be on YouTube I mean, everybody in my house has a YouTube channel. My kids have YouTube channels. My husband has a YouTube channel. He has a YouTube channel for RC trucks, actually. And that YouTube channel, he has over 8,000 subscribers. And he gets quite a few views. Now, of course, since he has gotten cancer again and it is stage four and he's down a lot of the time his channel has kind of been you know kind of put off to the side and he has hopes to kind of get into it again but I don't I don't know if he's going to be able to do that he has to do it on the days that he is feeling his best and those days are 
a lot less than his days where he is just completely out and exhausted. So, but anyways, I was always one of those people that said, I will never have a YouTube channel. I will never do that. I don't want to be on YouTube. It's too personal and people just, I don't know, people get too personal on YouTube, I feel like, and there are just so many negative comments because I do watch a lot of YouTubers and I just never wanted to be one of those people that were on YouTube and took all the critiques and the negative comments and all of that stuff because that's a lot of what I've seen. So anyways, I decided to make that video and then I had shared that was, I still wasn't on YouTube, but then I had shared a, um, Another page, the Kirby Rosane's page, where I did the flower fair. And then I had gotten many more requests with that video to, or with that page, to make another video. So that's when I decided if I'm going to be making these videos, I might as well just do it on YouTube. And of course, I didn't expect it to really turn into much of anything at all. I really didn't. And then I had people asking for more and more tutorials. So then I started the color alongs that with and did tutorials to all the, the limited palette color alongs. And my channel just started growing at an unbelievable rate. And I really honestly was in complete disbelief. I really could not believe it. And so, yeah, here we are today with a growing YouTube channel where I'm consistently setting goals and making sure that I meet those goals and everything because I really now love doing this and I really never thought that I would be here and to answer her question where she asked what my advice would be for anybody who wants to start an adult coloring channel I would say just do it if you want to color and you want to do it on film just sit and do it like I don't know if you sit around and you just kind of wait it's just never gonna get done and that is how you make things happen. You just sit down and you just do it. I mean, I just really think that is the best advice. I wouldn't wait. And I think that is all of, oh, she asked me where I learned art. Um, everything that I have learned is actually self-taught. And I'm just that kind of person. I have always been a person who has self-taught myself everything. I homeschooled my kids for years and I think a lot of that is maybe where um, being able to teach something came from because I've always been very fond of teaching. I don't have any kind of teaching degree or anything like that. I don't have any kind of art degree. I just research and research and research and I practice and I practice and I practice and I just put everything that I learn into whatever it is that I want to learn. And I apply it and I've always been someone who's very very motivated when I'm very passionate about something and of course here we are watching my channel Pamela's passion for pencils because you guys know I have an absolute passion for colored pencils I absolutely love them I don't know like the way that the pencil touches the paper and the way the colors come together I don't know it's just so soothing for me and I know so many of you feel the same way and just watching something just kind of come to life when you add color to it is just amazing to me. So yeah, <laughs> that is how I learned art. Everything I've ever learned in my entire life has been self-taught. So um, the next question is Cheryl Birthwrong. And she says, if you have multiple pages going at once, or yeah, if you have multiple pages going at once, and if so, how do you keep them straight? Oh, let me tell you, I have so many whips, especially <laughs> doing YouTube, because I use so many of my pages as, um, you know, tutorials to show people how to do things. 
And you know what? I'm going to do this backwards this time. I'm going to go back over these here with another layer, all the ones that I just did. But I think now when I come back and I do these down here, I'm going to do them reverse and I'm going to add the darkest color first. So let me go ahead so that I could um, kind of know which ones I want the darkest color to go down. This isn't even my darkest color, but I want to lay this color down first and then I want to come back with my shadowing color, which is that blue that is absolutely gorgeous. And by doing this, it just kind of um, adds more color to my coloring page or to the object that I'm coloring actually. And it's a really good variation of colors between the pinks and the blues in the violets, in the purples. I've got I've got a purple this purple here has a lot of red in it. And then I've got this blue that is very blue. And then I got these two different shades of purple. And when they all come together, they just create this beautiful color. I love it. So anyway, I have so many whips because of course I have a YouTube channel. And so I have so many pages that I could go back and finish if I wanted to. And the way that I keep track of them is I um, take pictures of everything. If you saw my um, camera roll in my phone, you would be like, wow. But like I keep track of absolutely everything. If I color, like when I did this one over here on this side, I have a picture in my phone that I keep of the pencils and the color combination that I used for that. When I started this, I made sure I laid down the pencils showing all of their numbers so that I can, you know, just like this. And then I just snap a picture so that I can make sure that I can come back and I can know exactly what I used on that page so that if I ever do want to come back and color that page or I want to use it for another um, tutorial on my channel, then I can do so. But that's basically how I keep track of the pages I'm coloring. And I don't really think I have that or too many unfinished pages. Some of them I just strictly use for tutorial sake. And I do have multiple um, copies of each coloring book. And that's just something that I've had to do because I am on YouTube or making uh, YouTube videos because I've used so many of my books as testers that there, you know, if I want to go back and there's a page that I want to color and I like say um, World of Flowers, for instance, I absolutely love that book. I think I have three or four copies of that book. And it's because I am constantly using that book for tutorials. And so my book had things on pages covered just kind of sporadically all over the place. And I really just wanted a clean, fresh copy of that book. And the same with a lot of the other Joanna um, Bassford books. And I'm answering all these questions and it's very hard to concentrate on coloring while you're answering questions <laughs> and some of your guys's questions that I wanted to answer they were much more tutorial uh, questions and I was like well I wonder if I should have colored during this video or I should have just um, used it as kind of like done demonstrations but for this one we're gonna color <laughs> But I kind of have to take breaks every once in a while just to be able to concentrate on answering the questions. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. The next question I have Martha here. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Martha. I have noticed in some tutorials that people will put a clear coat or a whitewash of something over their page before they start to color. What are the purpose and benefits of doing this process? Martha, I assume that possibly you're talking about gesso, and gesso is used when you want to apply some type some type of um, watercolor or some type of paint, possibly like maybe acrylic paint or something, and you want your 
coloring page to be able to handle that medium that you're laying down on the page. I actually have a big huge bottle of it right here and I bought this just in case I wanted to use acrylics for a background just to kind of protect my coloring page and it was going to be a future tutorial I've just not gotten to that yet because it's kind of a process and I don't know I really don't enjoy doing things that are a huge process because I like to use my coloring as a relaxing hobby and so when coloring gets to be uh, more complicated or more involved it kind of just takes the fun out of what it should be if that makes sense anytime that you do something and it kind of defeats the purpose of your hobby that brings you relaxation you probably just want to kind of leave it alone and most of you have probably noticed that I don't use a lot of um, goodness what is it called like mineral spirits and different things like that to be able to blend my colored pencils and that is because I want my colored pencils to blend themselves that is what brings me joy when I'm actually laying the pigment down onto the paper and just watching the colors kind of come together on their own. I don't like having to go through the trouble of adding extra or something extra to help the pencils to work. If I have to do something like that, I would rather just use a pencil that possibly cost more money is or, or is more of an artist grade type medium that is not going to need so much help to blend together because I don't know like I said that's just the fun of using colored pencils for me watching the colors just kind of come together together as they should on their own and the most that I'll use to blend my colored pencils together is my trusty little white Prisma color here. And I don't even usually use blender pencils so much. I have one. This is my Prisma color blender, but I only use it if I kind of want to pull the colors together when I'm kind of leaving a white center. And I don't even often use it for that. I use it for that every once in a while. Okay, so the next question is by Sandra Paulula. Again, I hope I I'm pronouncing your name right, or your name right. I would feel so bad if I'm pronouncing any of these names incorrectly. <laughs> do, how do you make time for coloring? Do you give up other things like TV to color? I would also love specific instruction on how to use oil pencils, especially how to make the transitions from one color value to the next since they don't blend like Prismas, but I think that would need its own video. Yes, Sandra, you are probably correct, but I am today when I'm able to sit here and color when I'm not trying to concentrate on the answers. I am today using the um, 120 Brute Fooner squared pencil set and these go down they are an oil pencil and they go down very much like a polychromos or a Spearfarben pencil. I absolutely love them. And working with these is just really wonderful. But as you can see, as I'm laying the colors down, I'm laying them over one another and it is very easy to kind of go back. Like this is the color, this. 089 or 089. This is the color that I brought in last when I was creating the color combination for these shingles. And I was so amazed when I came back in here at these pencils. Look what it does. I mean, I can do a whole separate video on how to use oil pencils, and it has been requested so, so much, but I would like to actually do an actual tutorial where I'm not answering questions 
for these pencils because these pencils are really, really great and they are oil-based. I've also been wanting to do one for the Polychromos, but look at the difference it makes and it just kind of lays over the top of the other colors. And if I wanted to come back and I wanted to add a little bit more of the red tone in there, I can also do that too, but the oil-based pencils, they lay down more so in layers rather than just blending together. And if you wanted to come back and say I wanted to take this tone that or this color that has more red in it, this is like a purpley, pinky, reddish, I don't know, like a maroon type color, purpley pink. <laughs> But if I wanted to come back and I wanted to go over that, it just very easily blends all these colors together. Look at that. But I just really, really love it. And I've got so many different tones of color in my hand, like I said earlier. And the way that they just all come together, it's just really wonderful. Let me see what was the other part of your question. So the other part of our question was, how do you make time for coloring? Okay, in all honesty, I've been asked this question several times, and in all honesty, since I've started YouTube, the time that I get to color is not very much at all. Usually, if I'm coloring, it is for a video tutorial to show you guys how to do something and I really enjoy doing that and believe it or not I have found since I started YouTube that my coloring is actually better when I do it in a video tutorial and that is all because of my personality and who I am because I have always been the type of person that works better under pressure and so I feel like when the camera is on me, there's kind of a certain expectation of my work, not just, not necessarily from other people, but from me, myself. I'm kind of, I don't know, I guess I would say that I am a perfectionist. And sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes that's a bad thing. But most of the time, I try to look at it as a very positive thing, like I do everything else. I mean, I'm one of those people that can have a really bad day, but I always try to find the good in a really bad day. I don't like to reflect on the negative because, I don't know, that's just not the way that I want to live my life. <laughs> so... What is the other part of your question? Okay, do I give up other things like TV to color? No, not really. I just, I don't know, it's this or that. Like either I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna color by myself in peace with Spotify kind of playing in the background or I'm gonna get to go downstairs and sit for a little while with my husband and watch a good show on TV. And I'm not really a TV watcher and I never really was, but lately we've gotten really into, um, gosh, what is that show called? Married at First Sight. And we've gotten a little bit addicted to that series. <laughs> so I've been trying to make time for TV when I never really ever watched TV before, <laughs> honestly. So lately, I've been choosing to do that rather than sitting at nighttime and coloring. And the time that I like to take to color, if I'm coloring on my own, is the daytime. Because right over here next to me, over on that side, I have a window right next to my desk where the sun shines in all day. And it not only helps with my filming, but I find that it very much helps with my mood too because I know I, I really thrive on sunlight 
and my office is very bright and happy and I love being in here and of course it's kind of my space and my area because I've got all my coloring supplies and all my things around me and so it is just really soothing to sit in here but I need to make time also for family and even if I'm in here filming and trying to stay on my schedule which I don't know how many of you have noticed I try to get a video out every other day and so I try to stay on schedule so that requires one day of filming and the next day of publishing a video or planning out my next videos or of course being in my Facebook group to check in with everybody and see what is going on in there and I've got days where I have to just answer emails and do other things that are kind of business-like and I also run another business as well an online business I'm a health coach and a personal trainer so I need time to do that too I'm very busy and my kids are being homeschooled so the time that I actually get to color not on film is a lot less than it used to be <laughs> but I love coloring on film I really really do and I love doing these tutorials because they're just so well received and I just really love that and I feel like I have created a wonderful community just with creating all these videos between the videos and my Facebook group I feel like I have brought so many wonderful people together and it is just such a positive thing in my life right now that I kind of need because I don't know how many of you know but my husband has stage 4 cancer so there are days here in my house that are not so great and so like I said I try to find the positive in, in everything and this is what keeps me going on a daily basis bringing videos to you guys and teaching people things and I just have always been one of those people that thrive on doing things for other people and that's what brings me joy and happiness so that's why I put so much time and energy into doing what I do Sandra also made a comment where she said, I'm always amazed by YouTubers who share 10 to 20 pages they colored in a month in the end of the month videos. I'm lucky if I get one to two colored in a month and I'm retired. Oh, Sandra, I totally feel you. <laughs> I totally get it. I am a very slow colorist, as you can see. Of course, I'm doing all this talking at the same time, but you can see how long just these shingles on this page are taking me. And part of that is me being a perfectionist and wanting to make sure I get lots of layers down and I want to make sure it looks exactly what I had envisioned prior to me even laying one pencil down on the paper to even start coloring the page because I already have a whole complete idea for this page and I've already got my colors in mind and everything else and I was just really feeling purples and blues last night and that's why I started here and of course I started in the center of the page because I want this little house here to be the focal point of the page. As I showed you all in my previous video where I talked about how I choose the colors for my coloring pages, I'll make sure that's linked in the upper right hand corner if you didn't see that yet, but that's a really great video. But anyways, um, I honestly don't know, aside from a lot of those YouTubers that I watch, and I do watch a lot of other YouTubers when I do have time and when I'm sitting here relaxing or maybe eating dinner sometimes, or usually not at dinner, usually at lunchtime. I'll sit here and watch some of the other videos from other YouTubers, or I'll sneak in on their lives and just chat with other people and stuff on their lives. I love when YouTubers go live. I really want to be able to do that soon, but I've just been so busy. I actually have the whole setup to be able to do that. I just have not done it yet, but You'll never see that many from me, and the only thing that I can um, say about that is that I think a lot of those YouTubers are not planning out videos to have videos up every other day like I am. I like to stay on my schedule, and I like to post a video every other day, and for me to be able to do that, most of the coloring that I'm going to get to do is going to be on film. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this video, because I just wanted to straight up just color without necessarily doing a tutorial. And of course, I wanted you guys to see 
how wonderful these pencils are. <laughs> <laughs> because I just love these pencils. I was amazed last night when I started coloring um, these shingles in on this little house here. I was really, really amazed by the way that these pencils were laying down. So yeah, I could assume that they have more time. Maybe they don't have all the things going on in their life that I have going on in my life. Maybe they don't have all the things going on in their life that you have going on, even though you are retired. But I don't know. I think that all of us live different lives and we all have different things going on. And like, I still have three kids at home and then I have a grandson that's over here all the time. So I have a lot that takes up my time. My next question is by Lauren Jones. And I think that this is going to be the last question that I answer in this video. And I'm gonna take the rest of them um, to a part two because there are a ton more questions, guys. You guys really, really gave me lots of questions. And this is only from the Facebook questions. So if you had to get rid of absolutely every single one of your supplies, oh my gosh, you're killing me. <laughs> Aside from one coloring book and one set of pencils, what would you keep? <laughs> you are killing me. I love my pencils and I love all my coloring books and I love having a collection. But I would have to say that I would have to keep my Joanna Basford Wold of Flowers. That's my absolute favorite book of all time and my Prismacolors. Those would be the two things that I would keep and I would be absolutely happy with just those two things. Those would get me through a very long time. And like I've told you guys in previous videos, I had a 36 set of Prismacolors that got me through a very long time, like the first um, three years, maybe? The first three years of my coloring journey, I used a 36 set of Prismacolors, and I did not have the amount of coloring books that I have now. I will be honest with you, I only have the amount of coloring books that I have now because I have a YouTube channel. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would not have all of the supplies and all of the things that I have. I know some of you in my Facebook group were asking me to do a video of my collection <laughs> of supplies and coloring books and everything and I'm like, ah! <laughs> but we'll see, I may make that video. I may have that one coming very soon, but that is going to have to be a series because that's going to be long. <laughs> Since I have started YouTube, and I've only been on YouTube for nine months, guys, like, I don't know. I think some people are surprised when I say that I have only been making these videos for nine months. But yeah, I've been on YouTube for about nine months, probably 10 months at the most, and my channel has just grown like wildfire, and I was never expecting this. And of course, with that came the growth of my collection, because if you're doing YouTube or doing, or doing a, you know, YouTube and teaching coloring tutorials or colored pencil tutorials and doing what I'm doing, like, you need to have stuff. So in the beginning... I didn't have all of those things, so I just made do, but as time's gone on, I have found ways to be able to acquire those things, still being the much frugal individual that I am, <laughs> because I am a very frugal person, and I do not just go out and spend the money needlessly on supplies or coloring books. I just actually um, bought myself a book that I have been wanting for the longest time. I wanted, um, is it a poll? A poll's the flower, the forest girl. That book is so gorgeous. It just came in the mail today. I want to color in it on camera so badly and do some kind of tutorial and I am going to. I got it in the mail today. It's still in the wrapping. I've not gotten to open it yet. And I'm so anxious to be able to open it, but I knew I needed to get this video done and out because I decided to take 
the entire day off yesterday because I had worked so hard on putting all of those other pencils, the um, or these pencils actually, in perfect color family order, and that took me hours between three days, and I needed a day off so badly from filming or doing anything, so I set myself a goal of taking the day off and forced myself to take the day off, and the only thing I allowed myself to do aside from spending the day with my family was to run some errands and get the things out for the giveaway. So that is what I did yesterday, and it was so hard to take a day off, guys. So hard, because then I just felt like, I don't know, I have to be doing something to, I don't know, I always have to be doing something, and this keeps me busy and keeps my mind where it needs to be. You know, like I said earlier, I like to keep everything very positive, and this just keeps me in that very positive place because I know that I am doing something for other people, and I just really, really enjoy that. I've just always been that way. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I think I've almost finished this roof. <laughs> And the questions that I didn't get to in this video, I will be coming back with another video to answer all of those questions. And I think that um, for these videos, I'm going to, going to continue coloring this page and I'm going to continue using these pencils because I just really want to play with these pencils. And this is giving me a wonderful opportunity to just sit here and color and kind of talk to you guys. And I'm really enjoying it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And I will see you in the next one. Happy coloring. Bye.